Have you ever wondered what the universe is made of? What if we told you that the answer is not atoms, particles, or even strings, but bits? Yes, bits, the basic units of information that power our computers and smartphones. But not just any bits, quantum bits or qubits, that can exist in superpositions of two states, such as zero and one, at the same time. This is the astonishing idea that some physicists and computer scientists have proposed that the universe is a giant quantum computer that follows computational rules rather than physical laws. In this video, we will explore this radical notion and show you how it could explain some of the most puzzling phenomena in nature, such as black holes, the origin of space-time, and the nature of reality itself. But before we dive into the cosmic computation, let's first understand what quantum computing is and how it differs from classical computing. Quantum computing is a new paradigm of information processing that exploits the weird and wonderful properties of quantum mechanics, such as superposition, entanglement, and interference. These properties allow quantum computers to perform certain tasks much faster and more efficiently than classical computers, such as factoring large numbers, searching databases, and simulating complex systems. However, quantum computing also faces some major challenges, such as maintaining the coherence of qubits, correcting errors and noise, and scaling up the number and quality of qubits. These challenges have limited the development and application of quantum computers so far, but they have also inspired some of the most innovative and groundbreaking research in the field. So how does quantum computing relate to the universe? And what does it mean for our understanding of the world and ourselves? To find out, stay tuned and watch till the end of this video. You will be amazed by what you will learn and discover. Before we talk about the holographic principle, let's imagine a simple experiment. Suppose you have a sheet of paper and a pair of scissors. You can cut out any shape you want from the paper, such as a circle, a square, or a star. Now, if you shine a light on the paper, you will see a shadow of the shape on the wall. The shadow is a two-dimensional projection of the three-dimensional shape. But what if you could do the opposite? What if you could reconstruct the original shape from the shadow? This is the essence of the holographic principle, which suggests that the information content of a region of space can be encoded on a lower dimensional boundary, like a hologram. A hologram is a thin film that records the interference pattern of a laser beam. When the film is illuminated by another laser beam, it produces a three-dimensional image that looks like the original object. The hologram is a two-dimensional surface that contains all the information about the three-dimensional object. The holographic principle was inspired by the study of black holes, which are regions of space where gravity is so strong that nothing can escape, not even light. According to the general theory of relativity, the size of a black hole is proportional to its mass. The more mass a black hole has, the larger its event horizon, the surface that marks the point of no return. However, according to quantum mechanics, the entropy of a black hole, which measures the amount of disorder or uncertainty, is proportional to its surface area. The more surface area a black hole has, the more entropy it has. This means that the information content of a black hole is not determined by its volume, but by its surface. This is a surprising result because it implies that a black hole has a finite amount of information and that information is stored on its boundary. The holographic principle generalizes this idea to the whole universe. It proposes that the universe can be described by a theory of quantum gravity that lives on a lower dimensional boundary such as the edge of space or the beginning of time. This theory would be equivalent to a theory of quantum mechanics that lives in the bulk of space, such as the interior of the universe. The boundary theory would have fewer dimensions, but more symmetries than the bulk theory. The boundary theory would also be simpler and more fundamental than the bulk theory, because it would not involve gravity or space-time. The holographic principle would therefore provide a way to unify quantum mechanics and general relativity, the two pillars of modern physics. One of the most striking examples of the holographic principle is the ADS or CFT correspondence, 
which stands for anti de space or conformal field theory correspondence. This is a mathematical duality that relates a theory of quantum gravity in a five-dimensional space with a negative curvature, called anti de space, to a theory of quantum mechanics in a four-dimensional space with a flat geometry, called conformal field theory. The anti de space is the bulk, and the conformal field theory is the boundary. The correspondence states that any physical process that happens in the bulk can be translated into a corresponding process that happens on the boundary, and vice versa. The correspondence also states that the number of degrees of freedom, or the number of ways a system can change, is the same in both theories. This means that the information content of the bulk is encoded on the boundary, and that the bulk is a holographic projection of the boundary. The ADS or CFT correspondence has many applications in physics, such as studying the properties of strongly interacting systems, such as quark gluon plasmas, superconductors, and nuclear matter. It also has implications for cosmology, such as explaining the origin and evolution of the universe, the nature of dark energy, and the fate of black holes. The ADS or CFT correspondence is one of the most powerful and elegant tools in theoretical physics, and it is a concrete realization of the holographic principle. Let's continue with the quantum error correction codes. These are mathematical techniques that are used to protect quantum information from noise and errors. Quantum information is the information that is stored and processed by qubits, the basic units of quantum computing. Unlike classical bits, which can only be in one of two states, zero or one, qubits can be in superpositions of both states, such as zero and one, at the same time. This gives quantum computers an advantage over classical computers, as they can perform parallel computations and explore multiple possibilities simultaneously. However, quantum information is also very fragile and vulnerable to disturbances from the environment, such as heat, radiation, or measurement. These disturbances can cause qubits to lose their coherence or their ability to maintain superpositions and collapse into a definite state, such as zero or one. This can result in errors and noise, which can corrupt the quantum information and ruin the computation. To prevent this, quantum error correction codes are used to encode the quantum information in a way that allows the detection and correction of errors and noise without destroying the quantum information itself. Quantum error correction codes are based on the idea of redundancy or the use of extra qubits to store the quantum information. For example, instead of using one qubit to store a bit of information, such as zero or one, we can use three qubits to store the same information, such as zero, 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 or one, one, one. This way, even if one qubit is affected by noise or error, we can still recover the original information by looking at the other two qubits. This is called a repetition code, and it is the simplest form of quantum error correction code. However, repetition codes are not enough to protect quantum information because they are vulnerable to another type of error, called a phase error. A phase error is a change in the relative sign of the superposition states, such as from zero and one to zero and minus one. This can happen due to interactions between qubits or due to quantum interference. Phase errors are harder to detect and correct than bit errors because they do not change the value of the qubits, but only their phase. To deal with phase errors, we need more sophisticated quantum error correction codes, such as the Shor code, the Steen code, or the surface code. These codes use more qubits and more complex operations to encode the quantum information in a way that allows the detection and correction of both bit errors and phase errors without disturbing the quantum information itself. Quantum error correction codes are not only useful for quantum computing, but also for physics, especially for understanding the properties and behavior of black holes. Black holes are regions of space where gravity is so strong that nothing can escape, not even light. They are also regions where quantum mechanics and general relativity clash, as they exhibit both quantum and gravitational effects. One of the most puzzling aspects of black holes is the information paradox, 
which is the apparent contradiction between the conservation of information and the evaporation of black holes. According to quantum mechanics, information is never lost or destroyed, but only transformed or transferred. However, according to general relativity, black holes emit radiation, called Hawking radiation, which causes them to lose mass and eventually evaporate. This raises the question, what happens to the information that falls into a black hole? Does it disappear with a black hole, or does it escape with the radiation? The quantum error correction codes provide a possible solution to the information paradox by suggesting that the information that falls into a black hole is not lost or destroyed, but encoded and protected by the black hole itself. According to the holographic principle, the information content of a region of space can be encoded on a lower dimensional boundary, such as the event horizon of a black hole. This means that the information that falls into a black hole is not stored in the interior, but on the surface. The surface of a black hole can be seen as a quantum error correction code that encodes the information in a way that allows the detection and correction of errors and noise without revealing the information itself. The errors and noise can be caused by the Hawking radiation or by the quantum fluctuations of the black hole. The quantum error correction codes can also explain how the information can be transferred from the black hole to the radiation without violating causality or unitarity. This process is called quantum teleportation and it involves the use of quantum entanglement, a phenomenon where two or more particles share a quantum state and influence each other. Before we talk about the quantum origin of space-time, let's recall what space-time is and why it is important. Space-time is the four-dimensional continuum that combines the three dimensions of space and the one dimension of time. Space-time is the stage where all physical events take place, and it is governed by the theory of general relativity, which describes how gravity affects the shape and curvature of space-time. Space-time is also affected by the presence and motion of matter and energy, which can bend, stretch, or warp space-time. For example, a massive object like the Sun can create a dent in space-time, which causes the planets to orbit around it. Similarly, a fast-moving object like a rocket can contract or dilate space-time, which affects the passage of time for the object and its observers. Space-time is one of the most fundamental concepts in physics, but it is also one of the most mysterious. One of the biggest questions is, what is the origin and nature of space-time? Is space-time a basic and eternal entity, or is it derived and emergent from something else? And if so, what is that something else? One possible answer is that space-time emerges from quantum entanglement, a phenomenon where two or more particles share a quantum state and influence each other even when they are separated by large distances. Quantum entanglement is one of the most bizarre and counterintuitive features of quantum mechanics, the theory that describes the behavior of matter and energy at the smallest scales. Quantum entanglement implies that the quantum state of a system cannot be fully described by the individual states of its parts, but only by the correlations between them. Quantum entanglement also implies that the quantum state of a system can change instantaneously when one of its parts is measured, regardless of the distance between them. This is called quantum nonlocality, and it seems to violate the principle of causality, which states that nothing can travel faster than light. The idea that space-time emerges from quantum entanglement is based on the observation that both space-time and quantum entanglement have something in common. They are both relational and contextual. This means that they both depend on the perspective and interaction of the observer and the observed, rather than on some absolute and intrinsic properties. For example, the distance and time between two events in space-time can vary depending on the reference frame and the speed of the observer. Similarly, the quantum state and the measurement outcome of a system can vary depending on the choice and the setting of the observer. This suggests that space-time and quantum entanglement are not independent and objective realities, but rather are manifestations of the information and communication between the observer and the observed. The idea that space-time emerges from quantum entanglement also implies that space-time is not a continuous and smooth entity, 
but rather a discrete and granular one. This is because quantum entanglement is quantized, meaning that it can only take certain discrete values, such as zero or one, or up or down. This means that the information and communication between the observer and the observed can only be exchanged in finite and discrete units called quanta. This also means that the geometry and structure of space-time can only be defined in terms of these quanta and that there is a minimum and maximum length and time scale that can be measured or observed. These are called the Planck length and the Planck time, and they are the smallest and the largest possible units of space-time. The Planck length is about 10 to the power minus 35 meters, and the Planck time is about 10 to the power minus 43 seconds. These are the scales where quantum mechanics and general relativity are expected to merge into a unified theory of quantum gravity, which is still elusive and unknown. The idea that space-time emerges from quantum entanglement also suggests that space-time is not a passive and static entity, but rather an active and dynamic one. This is because quantum entanglement is not fixed and permanent, but rather variable and temporal. Quantum entanglement can be created and destroyed, increased and decreased, or transferred and shared, depending on the interactions and processes that involve the system. This means that the information and communication between the observer and the observed can change and evolve over time, and that the geometry and structure of space-time can also change and evolve over time. This is consistent with the observation that the universe is expanding and accelerating, and that the space-time is not uniform and isotropic, but rather heterogeneous and anisotropic. This also implies that the space-time has a history and a memory, and that it can store and process information, just like a computer. The idea that space-time emerges from quantum entanglement is not only a theoretical speculation, but also a testable hypothesis. There are several experiments and observations that could provide evidence and support for this idea, such as detecting quantum gravity effects, such as gravitational waves, quantum foam, or quantum entanglement of space-time itself. There are also several models and frameworks that could implement and realize this idea, such as loop quantum gravity, causal dynamical triangulation, or quantum graffiti. We have reached the end of our video, and we hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. In this video, we explored the idea that the universe is a giant quantum computer that follows computational rules rather than physical laws. We discussed some of the evidence and arguments that support this idea, such as the holographic principle, the quantum error correction codes, and the quantum origin of space-time. We also showed how this idea could explain some of the most puzzling phenomena in nature, such as black holes, the origin of space-time, and the nature of reality itself. But this idea also raises some profound and intriguing questions, such as what is the purpose and goal of the universal computation? Is there a programmer or a program that runs the universe? How can we test and verify the idea of the universal computation? What are the limitations and assumptions of this approach? How does the idea of the universal computation affect our understanding of reality, causality, and free will? Are we part of the computation or observers of it? We invite you to think about these questions and share your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below. We would love to hear from you and have constructive and respectful discussion. If you have any suggestions or requests for future videos, please let us know as well. We are always open to new ideas and feedback. Thank you for watching this video and supporting our channel. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get notified of our latest uploads. This is Spaceverse, signing off. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the mysteries and wonders of the cosmos. Bye for now.